Hey, I'm about to sit down with Kurt with Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. We've got some big changes in their lineup. Two big changes in particular are about their bugle tubes. They've done something super innovative that I haven't seen done before. Uh, Kurt's going to break it down here shortly and see what is so new and innovative about these new calls. Uh, moving on to some more new stuff, let's, uh, let's move away a little bit from diaphragms. And I think what we are most excited about, what everybody, once they learn about it, is going to be most excited about are your new bugle tubes. Um, so yeah, let's, let's break into those. What, uh, what have you done new uh, that I think will change pretty much the industry, so to speak? Um, but let's, uh, can you touch on the new bugle tubes? Absolutely. We have two of them that we've come out with um, based, based around a couple similarities and then some differences. Um, the first one I'll talk to you about is the one we're going to call the little big mouth. And it is a downsized bugle tube. It is, a, it is replicated from our Wapiti Wacker tube, but it's 25% smaller. So we have, you know, engineer drawings of that bugle tube. We just reduced them down by 25% and to create the tooling and whatnot. And we come up with a, a smaller bugle tube. This is, this is one right here I have with me. It's 25% smaller. But the most unique part about it, Brad, is it's built out of aluminum. It's not plastic. Um, so it's, it's going to be, um, it's got, probably going to remind somebody to be truthful, as silly as this is, as a, as a heavy duty uh, aluminum beer bottle, if you will. It's that size, the diameter, it would be the same size diameter as a, like a water bottle or a, or a soda can, that's that size, when we've reduced it 25%. But the other thing that we did, we're so, um, we're so, you know, always trying to make sure that we're doing the best sound quality and we have the vet system that we use, you know, the acrylic mouthpiece with the spring, it, that's part of this bugle tube. So like I said, same as our Wapiti Whacker, uh, except it's built out of aluminum with this. Now, now other people are going to say aluminum is heavy as whatever. Brad, this thing weighs nine ounces. You have nine ounces. Our plastic full-size tubes weigh from nine to 12 ounces. So there's no uh, compromise in anything as far as Oh, I'm packing something heavy. None of that. Um, we, we put a nice sleeve on it. You don't get any metal sound out of it, like a twig sticking or anything. But the, but the reason, I'll go into the reason for the metal. Um, plastic devices, um, let's take bugle tubes, that's what we're talking about, always have a resonance about them that's, that's not realistic. And if you notice our products, anyone that knows our products, all have some sort of a dampening system on them to kill that sound. We have an external tube tamer on the Bully Bull Extreme. We have internal tube tamers on the end of the Rogue Bugle tube. Um, the Wapiti Whacker has a rubber boot over the end of it. Um, these metal tubes don't have that sound. And, and I've explained this to people before. If you look at high-end noise amplification, devices, i.e. musical instruments or car or truck horns, they're not plastic. They're made out of metal. And right. the reason for that is volume. There's, there's an incredible amount of, of sound sustaining volume in a metal tube. It, there just is. Like I said, there's no argument for that because musical instruments and car horns and train horns and all of that prove that, you know, that science. Um, so that's why we went after it. We wanted to create a smaller tube um, that was just as loud as the big tubes, but didn't sacrifice the sound quality or, or give up any features that way. And that's what we come up with the little big mouth. That's awesome. Have you have you stacked that? So the the little big mouth, have you stacked that side by side with a standard bigger tube, plastic tube? What what uh, what performance differences are there? Is it is it going to be the same, a little bit different? Volume wise, the, the little big mouth will be louder decibels by a couple. And we tested that um, than, than a, a full size plastic tube. The only thing, and again, I, I don't want to mislead someone. Well, let's just talk from a common sense standpoint. If you could get the same musical notes out of a, say, a trumpet um, that you could out of a trombone or a tuba, 
there'd be no need for the trombone or the tuba, right? Right. But we all know that's not true. Again, we're, we're talking common sense. So the only thing that, that you give up on the, on the small call are the lower bass tones of, say, the end of a chuckle or the grunting at the end of a bugle. Now, I, I personally wish that wasn't the case, but it is. But here's the reality. Anybody that's hunted elk, they understand that the sound that trips that bull's trigger on any given day and the parts of your bugle that you're doing that replicate um, the authenticity of, of a bugle and you get that bull mad are the higher frequencies. You can go chuckle and you can do your things and you can get bulls stirred up. But when you want to get him as mad as you get him and he fires back at you and he's ticked off, what's he going to do? He's going to challenge bugle you. That's a high screaming, aggressive note. So that's why I, I, I don't feel like we're sacrificing anything when we talk about a bugle tube as a tool to get an, an elk to respond and, and come in. Um, now, if the base and all that depth is what you want, well, then when we start talking about the second tube, we, we, we answer that question. But with the little big mouth, if we talk about, <clears throat> and I said, all honesty, if it gives up anything, it's just that lower frequency at the end of a growl on, on your bugle or the depth of a chuckle. And will that fit in like standard water bottle pockets on your pack? Or? Absolutely. I carried one of these around the entire elk season this last year, and I just stuck it right in my backpack and uh, on the right hand. I'm a right handed guy stuck in the right hand side of my uh, backpack where the water bottle would go. I had the water bottle on the other side and I packed my bow if I don't have a sling in my left hand because I'm right handed and it was always there and stuck okay. it right back. It fits perfectly right in a water bottle holder. Yeah, that's enough to sell me right there. So, <laughs> I mean, we st we'll still sell it with a lanyard and all that if a guy wants it, but it, it simply will just fit in your water bottle holder. Cool. Yeah. Let's. Uh, then, what's the what's the bigger tube you 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 spoke so of? The, so the bigger tube is one that this is this is again this is a this is a Rocky Jacobson creation. Um, he calls it the Bull Basher. It's a full size tube, um, but it's a hybrid tube. So the big end of this tube is just the portion of like we spoke about our Wapiti Whacker or Bully Bull Extreme. It's, it's, it's made from the same type of tooling system, a bowl mold system that we make that out of. Now the, the other end of this is metal. It's like the little big mouth. So you get about seven inches of the metal in the beginning and you finish with the plastic. So what he's getting, we get the advantage of the, of the volume and Tense, the intensity of the volume with the metal, finish it out with the plastic to get the depth. Rocky's a, Rocky's a four-time world champ, one of the best elk callers that's ever lived. Um, and he's picky about all those nuances and he didn't want to give up any part of that. So he, he, he sticks with these bigger tubes, these tubes that are 18 to 20 inches. His decision was to put the bigger bellow on it and just use the plastic that we, um, we've always used. To dampen that plastic, again, we'll go back to that little bit of a ring or that different tone you get out of the plastic. He said, we just put a rubber boot on the end of it like we do the Wapiti Whacker problem solved with that, that overtone, if you will, that over ring that you get with plastic. Now, one other feature of this call that's very unique. Um, we talked about the VET system. You know, that's a, a, an acrylic mouth with a spring that helps with the volume, much like um, the resonance in a piano string or a guitar string, once, once the sound goes through it, it vibrates and replicates that sound. That's, that's the premise on how that works. With this bull basher, Rocky wasn't worried about volume because we got the big tube. What he's worried about is diaphragm performance. And what allows your diaphragm to work the best is when you've got back pressure in your mouth. You're not just blowing the air through it and you lose the pressure. Well, to create that, he come up with this new device that he calls a splitter. And this is a helically, helical shaped aluminum cross hatched piece that goes in this mouthpiece. And what that does, the best way I can describe that is if you just made a, a shaped your mouth like a whistle and you blew air out, there's very little resistance. But if you took your hand and you start to move it towards your face as you blow, you get within an inch or so of your mouth, you start to feel that air backing up inside your mouth. Gotcha. That backup of air is what we call back pressure. That back pressure inside your mouth is what allows you to make that diaphragm perform at its, at its best. Because now there's resistance in your mouth. You've built up this pressure in there. And so all that tongue pressure that you use 
is more effective when you've got pressure in your mouth. Well, this splitter device does that. It resists some airflow in the beginning to create that back pressure, but you don't lose any volume or anything because now you're still blowing into a bigger, you know, three and a half inch diameter, 20 inch bugle tube. Awesome. No, I, hope, I hope all that's not too technical. I hope it makes sense and doesn't go too far. But I mean, we really do try to think this stuff out and make practical solutions for, you know, some small problems like that. No, that's awesome. That's that's awesome science to to you know, and kind of Rocky still being, you know, kind of the brain behind a lot of this and you know, how long how long since uh he came up with this first call and he's still innovating is pretty awesome. Yeah. And and we um yeah, we keep we try to keep him busy. We kind of keep him thinking he's always got ideas some of them we can they're practical and we can bring to market and other ones we're still trying to figure out if we you know we can do with this so i still i mean i think there's still stuff to come in the years years to come from some of his ideas but um these are some of them that he's gotten you know on the forefront of his brain and stuff we put together in the last couple of years on some of this stuff to release it here, here in 21. yeah that's super cool 